Hello and welcome to my video. All right, what are we going to do today? Well, this is um, this is a painting. Well, a, a couple of doodles that um, I did with my last student, who was here for three days, and uh, it was just me showing how to make a quick little winter landscape and. My student did this one, but th this wasn't intended to keep. I was going to paint over this anyway. And thank goodness, uh, oil colours have immense covering abilities. So I can just paint over this. I don't even care if something shows through because, at the, well, not at the moment anyway, because I'm going to be getting so much paint on there. So it won't even be an issue. So here we are. Let's have a nice dark blue at the top. And that even the dark blue will change. It will change into something completely different. Let's uh, let's start making something completely different here. What should we add to that? Let's add um, here. Tell you what. Let's put some let's put some uh, Japanese red into the mix. Something really really dark. I like a bit of dark. And. Um, Although these are not the dark arts. <laughs> um, I like drama, as you know. I like paintings to be a little bit dark. It is a well-known fact that if you don't put dark in your painting, you can't show light, because light on light will not show. So I've got to get something on here. And it's going to be a little bit of a, I think, maybe a little bit of a fantasy painting. So let's get something really, I don't know what you call it. I hesitate to use the word spooky, but it's, um, it's going to be different. So let's see now the colours that I'm using. I'm using um, ultramarine blue, Japanese red, red ochre. I will be using sap green. Oh, and I've just, I've just bumped into something here right next to my board. Uh, I might have mentioned this before. I have two pieces of card, two like that. Um, they're not very thick, but it's just it's a good sort of card for you know il illustrating on and well, you can do anything with it actually. If you put gesso on it, you can put oil paint on it. That's what I intend to do. I'm going to divide them up into little pictures. I suppose um, how big will they be? I don't know. I've got the foggiest idea, but uh, you know they're going to be little things like this sort of size, and uh, I'll put a little landscape on them, and I'm going to start giving them away to um, patrons. Payne's Grey, before I go on, Payne's Grey, I'm just adding a little bit of that to the, uh, to the mix. I might shove in all kinds of stuff, and just see where it takes me, because that's all part of the excitement. You never quite know what's going to turn up. So I've just put a bit of grey in that. You won't see much. I mean, you'll see, you can see dark stuff. Okay, that's fine. Nothing wrong with a bit of dark stuff. And uh, there is oil in this, but it's not much. It's just, a, as, as I like to say, it's just enough to make the paint mobile. So those pictures that were at the top, uh, they're pretty well hidden now. There's a little bit showing through. But doesn't, as I keep saying, it doesn't matter. I do take a lot of stuff very seriously, but uh, this doesn't matter. It's, um, it's, just, uh, it's just a painting. Now, um, I think I need a little bit of... It's got a bit of white in it. And um, what sort of white am I going to use? White. White, white. Titanium white. It's mostly uh, what people use now. And it's uh, as good as any other white. You get zinc white, titanium white. I mean, I think most of the properties of these different whites is how they age, um, whether they go yellow, all that sort of stuff. Uh, so let's see what we get when we put some of that on. Let's, uh, it's exactly the same brush, <clears throat> uh, which has just got all that on it. Let's see what happens. Let's first of all put and no, no oil added at all. Let's just put a, a little bit of a shape along here. 
Why am I doing that? Well, you might well ask. I have the foggiest idea. What this is about, I think, more than anything, is about freeing you up. Got to relax to paint an imaginary picture because as soon as you start to relax, all kinds of images will come into your mind. You know, it could be from something you did in the past, something you saw. Uh, it may just make you more aware of the shapes that you actually see in the paint. So let's see what happens. There we go. A bit of fun. I really do need a bit of fun at the moment. So. Now, a lot of people have been saying, how are you? Are you feeling better? Well, yes, funny enough, I am feeling a little better. I, for those who don't know, I have congestive heart failure. And um, I've come to the point now where I'm just thinking, well, get on with it, you know. There's no point worrying about it. If I worry, it'll make me ill. So I just thought, oh, well, let's just stop worrying. Let's see what happens if we try that little game. And um, I'll tell you something. It's sort of working. I, I, I've had trouble with my voice for the last few, well, quite a few months. Um, and you may be able to hear today, it's not quite so... Um, not quite so strained as it was. For some reason, I had a, I, I, you know, I had a sort of very well, a strained voice. It sounds like I really need to cough, but that doesn't seem to make any difference. And I don't really have a cough. And um, so, I don't know. Maybe it's a tension thing. But so I decided, it, you know, that I would relax and not worry about it. And it does seem to have changed how the um, condition is affecting me. I feel vastly improved. Can't explain it any other way, really. I think it's to do with sort of letting go. You know, like, well, do your worst. So let's get back onto <laughs> let's get back onto happier things. So. Painting, and also, oh yeah, sorry, before I get back onto happier, well, it is a happier thing, I suppose. Um, I do find uh, that when I paint, I don't actually feel unwell. It takes about two or three minutes. I get into a painting and I suddenly start to feel well. So maybe, maybe there's something in this relaxation lark uh, that, that's actually working. Uh, I've, got, I've got everything under the sun on this brush now. I've had... Ultramarine, <coughs> excuse me, white, Japanese red, Payne's grey, everything. So now I've added a little bit of green, sap green. Let's just put some sap green across there. And let's see what that does. That will make something. That will make something appear. I'm not, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with my skyline yet. It may not be here, it may, be, it may end up way down there, but we'll see. Um, oh, now, while I remember, lots of people, and I mean lots, are leaving comments on my YouTube channel, and they're, they're puzzled about this cloud technique, where I put a load of white paint, try and find the palette knife, Maybe not that one, this one. Okay, so I just sort of dab, 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 put some white on, and then I go over it with a big brush, like that, okay? Uh, or sometimes a small dry brush, and a, a sky magically appears. Um, it's not magic, and um, some people, I think, are quite frustrated because they can't make it work. The secret is actually very simple. Now, if I put some white paint, oops, complete with a half a badger. If I put some white paint on there and then I get a brush. Now this has got, you can see red on it, but it's actually dry. If I go over that really carefully, like this, I can blend. And I'm turning it sometimes like this and I'm touching it with the side of the brush. And I go over it all different directions 
and for some strange reason that will make that mark turn into clouds. Pretty incredible really when you think about it. Now the, the, there is no secret other than I am barely touching it and also I have not added any extra oil. This white straight out of the tube that's all there is to it but it's you, you touch it so lightly it's like um, you almost don't touch it like so and then uh, there you go that's it in a nutshell that's actually how you do it so um, what can I say you just I guess you just have to practice now I'm, I'm mixing a little bit more sap green with red ochre and I'm going to put in some kind of, I hope, uh, interesting skyline. I may, I may do this thing that um, another artist that I know does very well, and that's James Norton. He's an excellent artist, and um, I have bought a painting from James. Um, I'm going to show you. I'm just going to hold it in front of the camera. Ch check my hand it doesn't have any paint on it. It doesn't. And uh, this is this is one of his paintings. This is just on card. There's a little thin piece of card. That's one of his paintings. And I think they are absolutely gorgeous paintings. And uh, there it is. Okay. So I hope, I'm hoping that that focused. I'm just going to check my. It's on auto, so I'm going to just hold it there a little bit longer, so make sure make sure it um, sharpens up. So I like the transition between the sky and the land. And incidentally, um, a, lot, a lot of my paintings um, have the same theme that his have, and that is flat landscapes, bit of light on the ground. We're not copying each other. Uh, I, I don't copy people, not unless it's some. Um, well, in the past, I used to do commissions where people wanted me to copy old masters. That's a different thing. But um, I just, uh, I had to buy this painting from him um, because I think it's wonderful. And um, it, uh, it's the only other artist uh, on the planet, I think, uh, that I would buy a painting from. <clears throat> So check him on the internet. You have to type in James Norton artist, otherwise you'll come up with an American actor. He was a very good actor, I'm sure, but I don't think he paints quite as well as James the, James the other Norton. What are we doing here now? We're doing all kinds of strange things. I'm going to darken that right down. There, I'm going to take that right up. To the sky, I think. Just back and forth. I don't often paint like this. I tend to paint like that. Brush pointing at the ceiling. Uh, but when you want to get a nice long, flat, interesting blend, sometimes you just have to go right across the painting. And I insist, if you're watching this, James, I'm not copying you. You just have inspired me. And uh, just want to see what I can come up with. And what else should we do? We'll get rid of that hair there, I think. Now, what's that looking like? When I say things like now and there's a pause, and I say what's that looking like, it's because I've gone over to my uh, camera and I'm looking into the viewfinder and I can see what roughly uh, you can see. It's different. If I stand here and look at the painting, uh, I'm seeing it from uh, three feet away. What I want to do every now and then is see it from I don't know, 15 feet away. My room isn't quite big enough. So by looking into the viewfinder of my camera, I can see a much smaller version of what I'm doing and it, uh, it does actually help. So what should we do next? Well, again, um, I'm very glad you asked that question. What am I going to do? Right, I'm going to get some um, 
I'm going to get some yellow ochre. No, I'm not. I'm going to get some light green. Notice how quickly my mind changes. Light green. It is just light green, and that's it there. Comes out uh, distant grass in a tube. It's already made by someone else. So it's one of these colours that you can just scoop up on your palette knife and start to apply it and see what happens. Do you know, the, old, the older I get, the more I'm painting now, and I'll explain why I'm painting more now in a moment, uh, the more I'm um, taking chances and sort of risking stuff. It's, I mean, it's, there are much more risky jobs on the planet than painting a picture, but you know, it's time consuming to actually start doing this and videoing it uh, to, to make a YouTube video and hoping it will come out okay. Anyway, now back, why am I, why am I um, painting more? Well, I'll tell you. So, for the last 17 years, I've designed books and it runs into um, over 3,000 books for a company in the UK, which was owned by um, a delightful guy, a friend of mine. Um, I won't mention any names. I won't tell you the name of the company. Anyway, um, the company was sold to a well-known bookshop in London quite recently. And the first thing they said to everyone who worked in the company, don't worry about anything, we're not going to change anything, we're just going to carry on as we are, using the freelancers that we use, etc., etc. So the upshot is this company obviously um, said that, but they don't mean it. So they've decided to outsource all the book design work to overseas and uh, suddenly I mean and I mean suddenly overnight pretty well as of the 23rd of this month which is July 2022 uh, all my book design work will be going to um, India <clears throat> So I need to paint because YouTube is now, and teaching, am I in the way? I don't want to get in the way, no, not too bad. Um, YouTube and uh, my Zoom classes are going to be my main source of income. I don't really rely on selling paintings. Uh, I sell the odd one or two. I'm not particularly interested in selling paintings. Uh, I just like making videos. I enjoy teaching, so um, that's that. So uh, anyway, uh, this... I don't want to sound too bitter, but when companies say things like, don't worry, well, nothing will change, uh, everything will carry on as normal, don't listen. Sure, there are some companies out there that wouldn't dream of doing that, or even saying that. But evidently this company is not one of them. So, I, um, oh, now that's interesting. So I've got to, I gotta, as they say, think on my feet and uh, keep going. So I will. So if you do like this video, if you've got this far, please hit the... Uh, subscribe button and that like that little like thing you know the thumb up click on that and also if you do subscribe a little bell icon is next to the um button and um if you click on that every time i put a video up you'll get a little message that says whoopee do that old guy in france has just put up a new painting video so let's go and watch it.
Yeah. Here we are. Now, the foreground. What am I going to do in the foreground? I think, I think I'm going to use... Um, this is going to be a one-time use, this brush. This is something I bought, oh, I don't know when, years ago. This is, this is nylon. Don't like nylon. I don't know why the heck I bought it, but anyway, it's nylon. And it's hard. It's like, you know, there's no, there's no feathering at all in the end of the brush. When you compare it to the, um, the cheap brushes that I do buy, this like this one. This is bristle. Just hold it there so it focuses, I hope. There is, there's a sort of looseness about all these, these nice bristles. This one, there isn't. So all I'm going to do with this one is just use it to get some colour on the canvas. But I don't really care if it goes on um, with texture or not, because I'll add that later. So this is just green. OK, so I want a big lump of light down here. So I'm just going to shove in some light on the ground. Doesn't matter about this thing. That's just me dividing the board in half before. That'll go soon. So there we are. In fact, it can go quite easily. But I'm not going to. I'm not going to break sweat over that one. So let's um, let's just carry on here, getting some light colours on the landscape. This is um, this is almost like the sort of landscape people might do with watercolour, actually. You know, this sort of stuff where you just put water all over the paper and then you just sweep back and forth with a load of colour into wet paper and it all smudges and you see what happens. Although this is not a smudgy thing. This is this is like painting with glue almost, which is what I like about it. So now all this stuff here represents light hitting the ground. Once we've done this stuff at the bottom, I'll go up and uh, work a bit more on the sky. A few minutes yet. So if you're thinking of hanging around, that might make it worth your while. I'm aware that a lot of people are really, quite often, just here for the clouds. People seem to be fascinated by them and, and how to do them. But you have to, you have to get it in your head. Um, the uh, belief in what you're doing is a big factor. Um, and relaxing. You know, the more you relax, the easier it becomes. So let's just... This is all distant stuff. You have to imagine we're up on the side of a hill, looking down across the countryside. Maybe it's the evening, and there's just a little bit of light left hitting the ground. That's what I'm sort of after, I suppose. And um, it's something I've always liked. I've always liked that effect. So, and I'm still at the stage where I'm not really thinking of fields. I'm just, I'm just seeing this as just colour and different lighting effects. I might even go right across this again to mute everything that I've done and then bring it out again. That, that happens sometimes, and sometimes it's actually a good thing. It, uh, you, you get accidental things happening. And we all know about happy accidents, I think. I might, um, if I can, at the end of this video, I can't promise anything, because uh, a lot of it depends on the weather. Uh, <laughs> um, by that I mean it's so hot out there, I'm not sure whether I want to go out, but I can. I'll get my drone up and uh, get, put some shots on the screen of what it's like where I live, so you can see what it's, uh, what influences me. So, yeah, I think I might try that. I've got this great big brush here, which I have to say has seen better days. It's starting to um, suffer a little bit. And uh, I think I'll, um, I'm just going to sort of mush up that general area. Like I said, this is 
an experiment and fun. So let's just pull that all up. Let's do this and see what we get. Nervous about painting? Try this. I can recommend it. Now, you may notice. OK, as I started doing this, I put the um, brush on there and it produces a line. If I do this and that, you see there's a line. This is one of the things I was saying about the clouds. If I come into land like an aeroplane, gently on there, I can lose this line effect. So I'm going to just bring it in right from the edge. So I'm coming in like an aeroplane. I don't really care if there's a bit of a line there, but I can lose it. It's no problem. So there's my sky. I'm sort of building up an effect. Lots and lots of streaky lines here, but you know the words I often use? I don't care. I really don't care what they look like because they won't always look like it. Got to be brave. So we've got interesting skies here. I just want to check the lighting because, uh, because it's such a hot day and I have to work in this room with my shutters closed on the window. Otherwise the light reflects off the floor and there may be some light reflecting there. So what are we going to do next? We've got some nice big streaks. I might even put mountains in in a minute. Don't know yet. Did I stop the camera? Nope. I ought you know there are times when I really have to check. So yeah, back to what I was saying. Um, after 17 years of designing books, you, do, you get into a bit of a routine. Um, and it'll be very interesting to see how I adapt to not uh, starting the day with a new book to design it. It's going to be, I mean, I will be doing a few. There are, there are some authors who uh, want me to continue and in fact insist that I continue. So, that, you know, that, that's going to happen. Um, but uh, generally, in fact, you know, when I think about it, well, I'll think about it better when I get rid of this hair. Come on, you. Get off. Get off. Get off and walk. Uh, I'm making a mess here doing this, but uh, it doesn't matter. I can always fix that. Ah, oh, there we are. Got you, little swine. Now then, um, yeah, see any marks that were there? I could just lose them. So, um, OK, so I've sort of, uh, what I've done, I've achieved a sort of smoothing out effect here. Uh, so I think what I'll do next, what will I do? I think I want more darkness across the bottom of the sky. This is not something I normally do, you see. Normally I have a lighter, a lighter area at the bottom, but I don't think I'm going to on this. I'll just chuck in a bit more of the darkness. Yeah, right, so I keep doing this. Let's go back to <laughs> what I was talking about. So yeah, I won't be getting up in the morning and uh, starting the day with a new book. I will be starting the day with, what am I going to paint today? Maybe that's the way it's intended to go. You have to, you have to be positive. I don't hold any kind of grudge to this uh, this company because life's too short, basically. But I, I do think they should have thought a little bit about um, their overall image. You know, this caring company, apparently, um, that likes to look after its people. But there you go. The older I get, the, the fewer things surprise me in life. So what are we going to do next? It's got this sort of really nice, well, I was going to say blank canvas. It's not actually blank and it's not a canvas, but that sky could go anyway. But before I get really into the sky up here, I've got to establish my, my borderline there. And I think the way I'm going to do it is just start to bring texture 
down into this uh, well bright bright area and see what I can do with it just to give the appearance of landscape and some of it I will push up into the sky don't forget uh, you know if you're doing something like this I, I'm, I, oh, I've got to stop saying I can't emphasize this enough because that'll really tick people off after a while but what I'm trying to say is um, relax and play always think that as you're painting relax and play the other thing you need to learn is when to stop when to back off when to pause when to wipe off, how to wipe off, wipe off so that you're continually looking to see if you've inadvertently improved your painting by wiping something off. Because sometimes the wiping process will produce interesting effects. I think I'm going to zoom in on that a bit because um, you might miss out on something. So you're, you're seeing that dividing line between the sky and the ground. And what I've done, I've started pushing this light green into the, um, into the sky to see what I can get. And um, what I think I'm going to do is just take a little bit of this green and introduce a couple of, um, a couple of highlights. Oops, we've got subtle things joining with the sky. But what I want is just a couple of um, a couple of bright bits. So what I'm after is atmosphere, atmosphere and interest. And maybe a hill. some stuff going on. This is the point in a painting that I really like to see. You get to this point where you've got paint on there. Because uh, let's face it, you can't do anything unless you've got paint on there. And then um, I like to start, I don't know, what's the word? Coaxing it. Coaxing it into something. So I'm after the sort of intricate bits that you get in a landscape without actually painting anything intricately. So uh, let's get another colour. And I think, um, I think one that I did think on earlier, if I can find the tube, here it is, <coughs> is yellow ochre. Now, nice colour yellow ochre. Well, I say nice colour, depending how you use it. one of those things that you uh, you need to keep clean because it it's easily destroyed and it can easily turn into mud so I'm going to use the yellow ochre here as a sort of strong color to break up some of this these marks that I put on there before you may not need to worry about that because that's just me you know me being too lazy to gesso the whole board again. It's not necessary anyway. There are three coats of gesso on this. And uh, just because there was a bit of oil paint at the top, you know, that's not going to stop you painting over it. So there's a little bit of yellow. Now I'm going to do something a little bit unusual. And smudge it. It's 
So what have we got there? Distant cornfield. B, I suppose. Um, and of course it may not be. So now uh, I'm going to get um, Payne's Grey. Uh, sap green. Not much oil in this. And I'm just going to sort of um, put something over the bottom edge of that. Let's just have a line here. So I did say at the beginning, didn't I, that this is going to be um, a slightly, uh, is this the right word, playful? A playful painting. In other words, absolutely no plan whatsoever. Let's have something there. And let's have another one there. Why not? Now, what I'm doing might change. This is just, um, well, of course it will. Uh, this is me just sort of seeing what will happen. Because by doing this in the foreground, it brings it forward, brings it to the foreground. So, because it's dark. Um, let's have a little bit of oil in that because I want some texture in there and I don't have quite enough at the moment so let's see um, a little bit of oil on there and we'll make slightly textured shapes as fast as I can because I want to get past this stage down here you know as quickly as possible so that I can get back to the sky and finish my storm can't leave a storm unfinished. So we'll have a, something there. Now this is this is a sort of mixture of everything on the brush pretty well down there. It's got blue, uh, red ochre, sap green, Payne's grey, yellow ochre, you name it, it's in there. And uh, all I want to do is get an effect. Let's have them, um, I think we'll leave that as it is there. All right, so we've got these tree shapes here. Let's have um, more tree shapes there, distant trees, very, very, very vague, very, um, just suggesting stuff, basically. That's all I'm after. Okay, so there's a little bit of foreground. Or oh, foregroundery. So now I noticed that there is a little bit of light appearing on the land there, which I like, so I'm going to just emphasize that a little bit, like so. Let's have a little bit more. There's never enough. The thing about this uh, method of painting is that stuff, if, you, if you're going the right way and you're keeping it reasonably clean, stuff appears quite fast. You've got to keep your wits about you and make sure you don't miss anything. And Oh, now there's something that's quite nice. What you can do, what you can do with your fingernail. There we go, a little twisty something or other on the horizon. Heck of a day, isn't it? I mean, you wouldn't want to be out. Or maybe you would, actually. Maybe you would want to be out. I would. It's, uh, I'd, I'd love to see this sort of weather. I've seen it a few times in my life, but quite extreme in the UK. Um... You know, it was rare, but it's obviously becoming slightly more common now. So there, there. now I'm adding little bits of light into the, into the blend between the two 
the, the sky and the land. And that's giving me more and more perspective. And uh, quite interesting effects, really. So that we could put the suggestion of something there. So there could be a, a hill over there, catching a bit of light. It's just, of course, it's just streaks. Streaks and blobs. Blobbery and streakery. What should we do over there now? Let's, um, OK, so we've got that little bit of light poking up into the sky there with, with lines. Not sure I want the lines, so what I'm going to do is just smudge them a bit so that it is just a shape. Not necessarily a streaky shape. So it could be suggestive of a hill, maybe. And let's go back to the palette knife when I find it. Here it is. And I think as I've got it zoomed into that area, I think we should have a little bit of light over there at the base of the whatever it is. Bit of light catching the um, ground. reasonably effective. You can also do this, I mean you can take a palette knife with a absolutely, whoops, get it in front of the camera, a tiny bit of, is that even going to vaguely focus? Probably not. Not until I move away. Okay, maybe that's going to, okay, autofocus on very expensive camera, please do your job. There we are. Okay, tiny amount of white. Now focus on the painting, thank you. A uh, tiny bit of white. Let's just put some in, see what we get. What could it be? Could it be lights in a different, uh, different, <laughs> lights in a distant town? Don't know, could just be spots. Um, maybe, let, what else could it be? Uh, well, you know, a distant water suddenly appears in my painting, so maybe there's a tiny little bit of distant water there. I don't honestly know. And um, what else should we do? Let's go over here and just have something there for the heck of it. And another one there. Oh, I'm on a roll now. Right, it's time to play with the sky a bit. Um, Interesting, uh, before I get on to the sky, these lines that were showing through here now look like shadows from these trees going across a field. Not brilliant, but I mean, you know, that, that's the sort of stuff you need to um, look for. Before I get up into the sky, and you won't see all the sky yet, uh, where my hand is, there's another six inches of sky. but. Uh, We'll get to that in a moment. So here, I just want to do something uh, with this yellow ochre, and it just whip along the top. Don't ask me why, but it just seemed like the thing to do. Now we've got this this white showing through here. I quite like that. It wasn't particularly planned just appeared. And um, another little thing. I keep doing this. It must be really frustrating to some people because, um, uh, you know, some people I'm sure say, well, why don't you have a plan? Why don't you just sort of, you know, have a plan? Oh, I, I'm sorry, but I don't have a plan. Sometimes I, I've attempted planning things like my life and it just doesn't work. I'm a great believer in um, 
you know, plan the next hour, see what happens. <laughs> but um, just don't overdo it. Right, so we've got a sort of, we've got an impression of some kind of landscape. So now it's time to really get up into the sky and see what we can achieve. Now, what I want is movement. I want movement in my landscape. So the first thing I think I might do is um, stare at it for a minute. Okay, I'm going to just sort of put some white paint on here. And it will look terrible. It looks, you know, when you start doing this sort of stuff, uh, the sky can look unbelievably horrible. So horrible, in fact, you might be tempted to give up, but uh, never give up. Some of this uh, colour that I'm, um, well, some of this white that I'm putting on now is I'm deliberately pushing it into the blue because I want it more muted. Some bits I've left as hot spots, in other words, really bright, and other bits I've really mashed it in. And, and in fact, you'd, quite, you'd be quite surprised just looking at that, I think, of how quickly you can get cloud effects. Uh, you know, this is just the palette knife. I'm not blending this at the moment, so it's just white paint. And um, we'll just see where it goes, won't we? So let's have a little bit of something there, why not? Okay. Uh, try to avoid nuke effect. <laughs> that looks a bit nukey, doesn't it? So uh, that, that'll change there. But, um, if you spot something like that, you know, sometimes it's a good idea to take it out because, well, you wouldn't want that, would you? You know, this may be one of these paintings where I won't do much of the big brush stuff. I actually quite like the effect. That we're getting now so that, let me just sort that weird cloud out there keep some of it bright but uh, not all of it hmm okay very interesting <clears throat> Some people have asked me about the music that I play. I've changed it recently to a, a tune that I bought the license for. A lot of the music that I used to use, or most of it, was free, and you can get that from YouTube. But um, this uh, bit of music, which you heard at the beginning and will hear at the end, is called Infinite Emotion. And it's from a company called uh, um, Instant Music, I think. I'll check that. It'll be in the box below anyway, but um, I just find it nice and moody and a bit sort of, you know, mysterious. Um, I would like to have music playing in the background while I'm doing this, but I can't. If you do that and um, it's something you don't have a license for, and that can just mean that you've got your radio on, you'll get your entire soundtrack zapped by YouTube. I don't know, they're protecting the um, interests of the people who either sing or write the music but anyway so I'm actually working in silence here and uh, I would I would quite like to listen to music but there you go now this this sky is sort of I'm quite pleased with this um, let's take a bit more up here and you can see maybe where the white is mixing with a little bit of the the red that was in the paint at the top there. You won't, you won't see much. You may see it at the end, because at the end I'll be taking a photograph with a normal Nikon, and the, um, it always gives a more realistic uh, representation of what it looks like. Video is quite different from still photo photography. 
just going to adjust my easel. All right, there's a little bit of light catching at the top, but I think I've got that. Um, apologies if it's still there, but uh, I, as I've said frequently, I live in a house which is one of the hardest buildings I've ever known to um, actually light anything. It's uh, south facing, so you know my shutters are closed. I've got I've got an LED light up here. I've got a normal light bulb. I can't have that on. If I put that on, you'll get a big spot here. Um, and my LED lights are bouncing off the ceiling. I've got a door there, but I have to close the door uh, because the light coming in the window in the next room bounces off the floor and bounces up here. It's just unbelievable. So um, I do the best I can. Now, I don't want this sky to look too fiddly, so what I'm going to do is I, I will do a bit of blurring, obviously, but um, it's. Uh, It does look interesting in the viewfinder, I have to say. Maybe I'll do minimalist blurring. So let's have some white up there. And you know, uh, the thing with clouds, which, you know, I always say, clouds must go off the edge because they will never be contained in your painting, in the area that you're looking at. If they are, you're painting something which is possibly not meant to be realistic. Okay, so we've got some quite interesting sky stuff going on there. I think I uh, just want to pull that along the bottom. Pull that down along here a little bit. See how bold you can be with this? Just throw it on. Bearing in mind, you know, I don't have a lot of time to paint in this sitting. I mean, this may go to an hour, who knows. Um, so I'm going as fast as I can. You won't actually, when my, my videos, on, you know, if it's, a, if it's part one, maybe this is a part one, uh, you won't see the actual painting until about part two or three. But I'm not sure. Do you want to see a painting in three parts? Is that pushing it? I don't know. I have to figure out what people's attention spans are actually capable of because some people just get bored after 20 seconds. So. <clears throat> anyway, quick wipe of the hands and uh, you're seeing pretty well all the whole painting now. I think. Um, so I'm going to get a Biggish brush. Let's, well, we could use the same one. Um, let me just check, see what's on it. There is a little bit of paint on there, as you can see. So uh, yeah, it'll probably be okay. So let's do the first swipe. Now, some of it I might not swipe. I might not do anything much here, but up there I'm probably going to. So let's see what we get. And in time for a wipe. Now you can't see much on there, but it is there. So you've got, you have to wipe it. So don't forget, coming into land so that I don't leave a mark on the um, painting, so it's in and off, like so. And uh, it's a lot quicker than having, um, you know, a collection of small, soft blending brushes. It's definitely a different sky, this. It's quite interesting to see. Right, I might do one across there, because I'm brave and daring. One in one sweep. Oh, now that that produced some very interesting things. It produced some uh, straight lines there and here. 
but um, I don't think I care. It's just, um, uh, and, and I'm almost not. I mean, really not touching it. I'm. Um, if the paint is, um, I don't know, a, th a sixty-fourth of an inch thick, I'm hitting it at a sixty-third of an inch. So because I only want to take the top off the peaks, I don't want to push the paint around. So let's see if we can do that and lose that line just a little bit. Although some of them I'm liking very much. Different. It's always good to be a bit different, isn't it? Big dark area there, not much happening. Do I want that? In fact, I think in this case, I do. There is a bit of texture in it, and it will show on the photograph. So the question is now, do I do a little bit more on the um, landscape? Let's give you a quick view of the whole thing. Uh, again, once I've cleaned my hands. Well, you can definitely see um, the whole thing there. And I think I might keep the, um, the landscape really simple down there. Do I want to add more light spots? I mean, uh, when I say spots, uh, what I actually mean is uh, light streaks, as in like, um, you know, light catching fields in the distance. Yeah, I think I do. It just needs a little something in there. Let's have, um, let's have one there. And a few over the back here. Oh, that's a little bit, oh no, that's okay. I thought maybe it was too big. And that one is quite big. Treat it the same way as the clouds, if you do get that happening. Just sort of iron them down a bit. Quite effective. Okay, now I've got a couple of what I call numb spots. Sounds like I've got a medical condition, but um, I use the word numb quite a lot. If I want to tone down a part of the picture, I, I quite often refer to it as numbing it down. Now a numb spot here. We got interesting light behind the trees at the bottom there. But when you go across the field, it goes a bit numb and flobby. So I, I think we should probably increase a little bit of contrast just there. It's just so that it doesn't go, um, you know, I don't know how to explain it, but droopy. We don't want droopy. I don't think anyone wants droopy. So, um, There we are. Now that may be it, you know. Uh, I don't know. No idea. Absolutely zero idea how long I've been going. But uh, I think I'll probably stop. There we are. Very minimalist palette. Light green, sap green, red ochre, Payne's grey, white, ultramarine blue, yellow ochre. That's probably it, isn't it? And oh, a bit of white. Um, and there we are. So there may be, as usual, a part two. In fact, have I even finished? I'm doing it again, aren't I? I'm irritating people. Uh, I want to keep going for a minute longer. What do I want to do there? 
I've got people's attention to the light and I've got the clouds, but I think there's something missing in here. And it could just be that I just need to do something here. Just in that area. Yeah, I think maybe that's it. I'm going to just leave it at that, I think. Um, yeah. OK, so usual usual stuff. If you want to go to a Zoom lesson, info below. If you want to be a Patreon, um, patron on my Patreon page, that's also below. Um, I am teaching people in France. Um, I got one more student booked in August, and then after that I'm quite free. There are several people who have expressed interest, but who knows? Um, but if you if you do want to have a chat and see a live demo, my Zoom class is possibly the best way to go. Um, what else? Yeah, well, thanks for being here. I hope you've enjoyed it. And as usual, oh no, I've got to do something there. Yeah, I've got to do something there. Okay, anyway, uh, as I was saying, yeah, I hope you've learned something. Just going to zoom in a bit more. There's just something lacking over here. Okay, so we've got this sort of uh, hint of a, a, a hill there, a distant, misty, dark background. We've got these light bits at the bottom of the hill. And to be absolutely frank, I think it needs enhancing along there just a bit. So that there's a bit of light just catching the lowlands of the hill. Are they lowlands? Maybe these are lowlands because they're lower. Maybe these are the not so lowlands, not so highlands. My goodness. Um, and I think, yeah, a little bit, of, it adds a little bit of interest there, I suppose. Okay. I'm still bugged slightly by the other side of this field, but I'm not going to worry, I think. That really is it. Okay, hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for being here. And uh, I'll see you on the next one, I hope. So um, don't forget, subscribe and like and share until you are blue in the face. And uh, see you next time. Bye for now. <laughs>